Welcome everyone. In this video, we are going to be diving into my top five best teams for the Ultra Premier Classic. Now, at the time of recording this video, the Ultra Premier Classic is back for season 12 of Pokemon Go Battle League. It is set to drop later on today. So I thought as, as per usual, as per tradition with this channel, I'm going to give you my top five best teams, uh, give you some ideas uh, to have the most success in the Ultra Premier Classic. Very excited for a lot of these teams. It's always nice when they bring back the Ultra Premier Classic, as Ultra League can be a little tricky at times with the demands on having XLs and Legendaries uh, to have the best success. It's nice to have an option to where you don't need the high price, high ticket uh, XLs or the often difficult to uh, obtain Legendaries. So Ultra Premier Classics back. We're going to dive into these teams, but before we dive into these teams, I want to set the table a little bit, guys. Uh, with uh, the legendaries and XLs being banned, that does not leave much room for bulky Pokemon that you can run in this cup. So uh, it is a bit tricky trying to get a decent bulk score with anything uh, that would make sense in terms of team comp. So... We are going to take the bulk scores with a grain of salt, guys. That does not take away from how powerful any of these teams can be. It is just very tricky getting a decent bulk score on a team comp that makes sense. So we will uh, press on with that in mind. And without further ado, let's dive into team number one. All right, guys, here we go. Team number one for my top five best teams for the Ultra Premier Classic. And it's a very powerful one. Might look a little familiar. At least two of these Pokemon on team number one may look a little familiar when paired together. It is the classic and always powerful Walrein Trevenant Core. But with a new addition in the form of Dragonite in the back to bring it home for you. Walrein and Trevenant, uh, two Pokemon that pair together beautifully. Although they do have a major core breaker, which we will discuss as we move on into the matchups. But let's have a look at this scorecard here. And here we go. How about this scorecard for team number one? And as I mentioned, bulk scores are out of the window for Ultra Premier Classic teams on PV Poke. They're just uh, PV Poke just does not see very many Pokemon that are uh, that are uh, eligible as bulky. So it is what it is. But my goodness, bulk score aside, you get an A for coverage, you get an A for safety, and you get a B for consistency. Not bad at all, my friends, for team number one. Let's have a look at these matchups here. So, Walrein, always a powerful lead. Uh, even with the nerf for season 12, it's still good, guys. A lot of people have overreacted and just completely abandoned using Walrein altogether, all just because, uh, you know, you don't get... You don't get a four cycle on your on your icicle spears. It's not a big deal. It's still good. It's it's not it's not god tier as it was in the past, but it's still very good. Walrein is still Walrein at the end of the day. Uh, so Walrein on the lead is going to be very powerful. A lot of people are going to be running Trevenant on the lead. A lot of people are going to be running Flyers on the lead. Going to see a lot of Nido Queens as well. Walrein's. Walrein gobbles all of those up for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. There is a very annoying core breaker, though. It does come in the form of Obstagoon, which for some reason we don't see in any of these matchups here. But I'm going to discuss it, guys. Obstagoon core breaks Trevenant and Walrein pretty hard, but it is not impossible. So uh, with an Obstagoon lead, it's going gonna, it's gonna to take a team effort. Uh, you're going to have to chip that thing with an Icicle Spear. Um, I, would, I would just chip with one uh, 
because you miss out on that four cycle on your second icicle spear, uh, that's a little too much uh, fast movement pressure for Wall Rain to hang in there and, and uh, tank from Obstagoon. So you're going to chip and dip on those Obstagoon leads into your Dragonite. Uh, it's a bit risky to go into Trevenant, which is the safe swap on this team. Um, you will likely draw out an opposing Wall Rain, and it would be good to draw that out because on Dragonite, because of that dragon flying typing, it's taking double super effective damage, and it's not going to last very long in there. So the Wall Rain, if they have it on their team, which is not likely if they're leading Obstagoon, that would make them double weak to fighting type damage. But if they're a mad lad and they're a running a team that's ABA weak to fighting type damage, it would be good to draw it out on your Dragonite. Um, so that's how you have to play the Obstagoon leads. Team effort, chip and dip into Dragonite. And what else do we have here for something that I wanted to go over? Now it escapes me, of course, now that I am recording this. Let me see here. Um, everything else is basically pretty straightforward with this team. It's a very easy team to run, uh, easy to understand, easy to grasp. Uh, you're swapping out on uh, uh, Obstagoon leads after you chip and dip first, of course. But everything else, you are going to be uh, doing very well on the lead with Wall Rain. So like I said, a lot of people are going to be running things that are going to be weak to Ice-type damage. And very few things can withstand that Icicle Spear spam from Wall Rain. So... That is team number one. Very powerful team. Uh, very solid scorecard minus the eyesore of a bulk score there. No big deal. Um, but yeah, this one I'm definitely going to be trying out on the channel. And it is Wall Rain on the lead. Trevenant on the safe swap, except for Obstagoon leads, of course. And Dragonite in the back to close the game strong. So... Uh, with all that said, that is team number one. Let's have a look at team number two. All right, guys, here we go. Team number two, another very powerful team for the Ultra Premier Classic, and it leads with S Cavalier. On the lead, you got Nidoqueen Queen as your safe swap and Gyarados in the back to close the game strong. S Cavalier. Very powerful uh, pick for the Ultra Premier Classic. Of course, it does run counter, which absolutely handles those Obstagoons. And uh, Wall Reigns, of course. Nido Queen on the safe swap is very solid. You could run the recommended Earth Power, and that is recommended by PV Poke. Um, you could also run Stone Edge, I think, which has a little bit more, a lot more play, actually, in this meta. And, um,. Again, PB Poke also recommends that you run Megahorn on S Cavalier. I highly recommend Aerial Ace. You will find that to be a lot more useful in more circumstances than Megahorn would be because you've got a lot of poison types in this meta. Um, there's going to be a lot of charmers in this meta. And uh, if you encounter a Trevenant on the lead and you have Aerial Ace, it changes that matchup drastically. So I would highly recommend Aerial Ace on S Cavalier. But let's have a look at the scorecard here. And here we go. Another very solid scorecard for team number two. You get an A for coverage. You get a B for safety. And you get a B for consistency. Amazing scorecard for team number two. Let's have a look at these matchups here. So S Cavalier on the leads, gonna be very powerful, especially with all of the Wall Rain and Obstagoon leads. You're gonna have a fun time uh, with S Cavalier on the lead. Uh, other counter users outside of Obstagoon, uh, such as Blaziken or maybe a Machamp, those are gonna be tricky. And in that case, you're gonna safe swap into Nato Queen. I did want to really discuss Swampert. That one is going to be tricky because it core breaks uh, as Cavalier and Nato Queen quite hard. Um, for those of you that are seasoned and are very good on your counts, uh, the way that I would play it is uh, the Swampert 
is is definitely going to build up to eight. That's that's what it takes to get to their first EQ. Um, and what you can do is if you're seasoned and uh, pretty experienced with Pokemon Go Battle League, you can throw on seven of your counters, hit them with that drill run, and once they... Uh, and then catch either the EQ or the Hydro Cannon onto your Gyarados. Um, for those of you who are a little bit more inexperienced, um, the way I would play the Swampert lead is shield up their first move, get off your drill run, shield up that first move, and then uh, swap into Gyarados and play on from there. Um, so that's how I would handle Swampert on the lead. Um, and let's see, what else do we have? Uh, anything else? It's pretty straightforward. Uh, fire types. You're getting the heck out of there into your Nidoqueen. And the same goes for the Flyers. Like uh, Crobat and uh, maybe an occasional Gliscor that you may see. Uh, you'll want to get out of there Um into well if it's Gliscor you're gonna go into Gyarados but if it's Crobat you can play that out with uh with uh, Nidoqueen even if you're not running Stone Edge which I would highly recommend for this meta um even if you're running Earth Power you can Poison Fang that and then and then uh Earth Power it and uh that's the best way to tackle a Crobat on the lead um and everything else pretty straightforward uh like I said a lot of people are gonna be leading with uh, wall Reigns and Obstagoons makes for a fun time for S. Cavalier. And if you're running Aerial Ace, which I would highly recommend, you're going to have a lot more fun if you were to encounter a Trevenant on the lead. Just saying. But that is team number two. Uh, S. Cavalier on the lead, Native Queen on the safe swap, and Gyarados in the back to close the game strong. So with all that said, that is team number two. Let's have a look at team number three. All right, guys, and here we go. Team number three. This was one of my favorite teams uh, to run back when we had Ultra Premier Classic. The last time it was available, I loved running this team. It is so effective, and it leads with Crobat on the lead. Snorlax is your safe swap, and Obstagoon in the back to close the game strong. Classic ABB line, Poison Double Normal, and the Ultra Premier Classic. Very powerful uh, and effective team. Let's have a look at this uh, scorecard here. And not bad at all, guys. Holy smokes. We got a bulk score higher than a C. Can you imagine? Holy smokes. Oh, my goodness. Especially on a uh, ABB-style team, nonetheless. But any team with Snorlax is going to definitely be doing well in the bulk department. One of the few Pokemon in this meta that actually has some very nice bulk. Um, so you get a B for coverage, B for bulk, B for safety, and an A for consistency. You don't get much better than that. That is fantastic. Let's have a look at these matchups here. Crobat on the lead, very powerful. Uh, it is surprisingly bulky for those of you who have never used Crobat before. This thing is quite bulky. It is, uh, it is very good. I am a massive fan of Crobat. Um, and uh, running it on the lead, you're going to have a lot of success. Uh, it does say that it loses to Trevenant. But uh, keep in mind, guys, these matchups here are all in the one shield scenario. If you're running it on the lead, you are going to be in the two shield. And uh, Trevenant does not have a prayer against Crobat in the two shield scenario. So you're going to do just fine on those Trevenant leads. You're going to do fine on the Needle Queen leads as well, as most people generally just go with what PV, PV Poke recommends, and uh, they will likely not be running Stone Edge. Again, which I would highly recommend if you're using Nidoqueen, uh, I think uh, you're going to do very well with Stone Edge. Uh, Swampert is really not as bad as you would think it would be, as uh, 9 out of 10 Swamperts are going to be running uh, Earthquake, and even if they're running Sludge Wave, you resist that as well. They can only hit you with those Hydro Cannons, which do add up, but like I said, Crobat, quite bulky. Um, from full health, it definitely tanks two Hydro Cannons from a non-Shadow Swampert. But I would not tank two. I would just tank one and uh, make an aggressive play in the Snorlax. You want to draw out any fighter that may be lurking in the back. That is how this team is designed. Snorlax is the bait to draw out any counter user that may be lurking in the back. 
so that Ops of the Goon can roam free and wreak havoc as it often does. Um, so Swampert leads. Uh, you can stay in there and dance around with it a little bit. Tank a hydro cannon uh, uh, and uh, just get off some nice fast mid pressure and maybe drop a debuff on it uh, while you're there. Uh, and then make a play into your Snorlax. That's how I handle Swamper. Any neutral or losing lead, you'll want to go into Snorlax. Anyways, that's how you run ABB style teams. Um, which makes it pretty straightforward and easy to use. Uh, very powerful and effective team comp. Everything else pretty straightforward for uh, team number three here. Uh, so yeah, and a very solid scorecard given the circumstances with the how the meta is. So that is team number three. Crobat on the lead. Snorlax on the safe swap to draw out those fighters. And Obstagoon in the back to bring it home for you. So uh, with all that said, that is team number three. Let's have a look at team number four. All right, guys, here we go. Team number four, another solid team that you can run in the Ultra Premier Classic. And it leads with Swampert on the lead, Snorlax on the safe swap, and Dragonite in the back to close the game strong. Very solid team for the Ultra Premier Classic and very accessible, I might add, guys. All of these Pokemon, are two of them have had community days, and by now many of us already have a Snorlax as well. Very accessible team for team number four. Let's have a look at this scorecard here. And here we go. We get a B for coverage, C for bulk, B for safety, and an A for consistency. Very solid scorecard for team number four here so swampert leads gonna do very well of course against the poison types like nato queen you've got a decent matchup against crobat as well um but i do want to discuss the wall rain lead that's going to be the probably one of the biggest obstacles that you face with this team uh, t does take a team effort, and you absolutely have to chip it with an Earthquake. Uh, you don't want to stay in there uh, the whole time because you will lose. But it is very important to get off that chip damage and either get a health advantage or a shield advantage uh, before making a play into Snorlax. You have to, it's a team effort between Snorlax and Swampert to uh, get the wall rain out of the way because that is a nightmare. If you're running a dragon in the back, especially a dragon flying type like Dragonite. Uh, so that's how you handle wall rain with this team. Um, uh, and charmers. If you encounter a charmer on the lead, you have to stay in. You have to stay in to take out that charmer uh, at all costs. You don't want that thing anywhere near your Dragonite. You don't want to risk it finding its way to that Dragonite somehow, some way. So the safest bet on those charm leads is to just spam them with hydro cannons just as fast as you get to them. Uh, do everything you can to take out the charmer. Um, uh, Trevenant leads. That's why we've got these two Pokemon in the back. Both Pokemon absolutely handle Trevenant. Uh, so that's the goal with this team. If you run a Swamper, you want to have optimal coverage for grass types like Trevenant. Um, something like a Venusaur is a little, little bit more tricky. Uh, you definitely can't stay in. You got to go into Snorlax, soften it up. Um, if they choose to start throwing up shields, they may not even stay in, uh, knowing how dominant of a matchup that is. But hopefully, uh, if they swap out, you can flip switch with Snorlax. Try and fight hard to flip switch because alignment is very crucial on grass type leads particularly venusaurs um but i don't know how many venusaurs you will see we didn't see too many venusaurs last time and i don't uh see that changing much just because there are going to be so many wall rains so many trevenants a lot more dragons in the form of dragonite and como o so i don't imagine you will see too many but if you do uh you gotta go immediately in the snorlax uh everything else uh obstagoon that's another one where, kind of like with Charmers, you have to stay in there. You do you do outpace because you get a four cycle uh, on your Hydro Cannons. Um, it alternates between five Mud Shots and four. So you do outpace, and you will do just fine in the two shield. 
Uh, so that's what I would do with Ops Dugoon. Once they see that you're staying in and you want to take them out, they will likely swap out to, uh, to, um, see what you have in the back. So stay in on Ops Dugoon, stay in on Charmers, everything else pretty straightforward. You're swapping out immediately on anything that has any sort of grass type coverage, whether it's an actual grass type or something that has access to a grass type move, such as Surfetched or Gallade. They both do have access to Leaf Blade. So that is team number four here. Another very solid team. Pretty straightforward, easy to run, and very accessible. So Swampert on the lead, Snorlax on the safe swap, and Dragonite in the back to close the game strong. And with all that said, that is team number four. Let's have a look at team number five. All right, my friends, last but certainly not least, team number five leads with Kanto Mock on the lead, Gyarados on the safe swap, and Omstagoon in the back to close the game strong. I like uh, Kanto Mock as the lead on this team, but depending on where you are in ELO and what you're seeing a lot of, you could also just flip Obstagoon into the lead and have Kanto Mock in the back and run it like a pseudo ABB style team. That would work equally as effective. I just I like the coverage that Kanto uh, Mock has on the lead. You can hit a lot of things for either super effective damage or nice neutral damage. So. Let's have a look at the scorecard for team number five here. Not bad. Identical scorecard to team number four. Very solid. You get a B for coverage, a C for bulk, a B for safety, and an A for consistency. Not bad at all. Very solid for team number five. Let's have a look at these matchups here. And uh, pretty solid matchups. Uh, like I said, I am a Kanto Muck enthusiast. I really like this Pokemon, especially uh, if you happen to catch my, I think it was my most recent Ultra League video, uh, had Kanto Muck on it, and uh, if you watch that video, you'll know why I like Kanto Muck. And it was sort of a sleeper pick last time. A lot of people caught on to the effectiveness of Kanto Muck, uh, whether it be in its normal or shadow form. A lot of people caught on as a as the Ultra Premier Classic was winding down the last time it was available. It is very good. Uh, in both the Ultra League and in the Premier Classic. Uh, has very nice bulk. Has excellent coverage uh, as well. So, Kanto Muck on the lead. You're going to have problems, however, with Swampert leads. Uh, Nidoqueen can be a bit of a problem as well. Um... You just can't output enough damage on Nidoqueen. Of course, you can hit it with those uh, Dark Pulses, but my goodness, do you have the threat of the Earth Power with Stab from Nidoqueen. So if you encounter a Nidoqueen, um, you can play out the One Shield. That's how I would uh, play both Nidoqueen and Swampert, which we will get to in a second here. But uh, Nido Queen, while we are on the subject, I would play out the one shield, try and get that chip damage off, and then make the play into Gyarados. It's important to get the chip damage because Nido Queen uh, has very nice bulk, and that would make it a lot more manageable. Uh, Swampert, uh, you're not going to want to play that game that same game with Swampert you have two decent answers to it in the back uh, so I would immediately safe swap into Obstagoon not Gyarados Gyarados is the hard counter Obstagoon can prove to be a solid safe swap as well you will likely draw out a counter user if they have it at all in the back you may even draw out a Crobat um, so that's the goal here you want to bait something like that out uh, so that you can uh, have a better time uh, in the end game with Gyarados. So uh, Swamp Elites, we are safe swapping into Obstagoon. Nido Queens, we're chipping and dipping into Gyarados. Um, Wall Rain, I wanted to go over as well. Wall Rain's pretty manageable with this team. Uh, of course, having a counter user in the back, you're going to be doing very well. Um, you just don't really want it on your Gyarados. You are taking neutral damage, but Gyarados, not known for its bulk, uh, can struggle at times against Wall Rain. So as long as you can successfully shield up the EQ, you're going to be doing fine because you are absolutely shredding with those poison jabs with stab. You're doing a lot of neutral damage. 
and you can absolutely threaten to hit it with super effective thunder punches. I would play out the one shield, get off a thunder punch, uh, maybe two, and then make the play into Gyarados. That makes it a lot more manageable for Gyarados. Um, and everything else, pretty straightforward. You're going to be having a fun time with Kanto Muck on the lead with as broad of coverage as it has. Uh, it's going to be doing very well. But those were the major obstacles that I wanted to discuss. Everything else, pretty straightforward with this team. Solid scorecard. Uh, very solid team overall. That is Kanto Muck on the lead, Gyarados on the safe swap, and Obstagoon in the back to bring it home for you. And that about wraps it up, guys, for my top five best teams for the Ultra Premier Classic. Always nice and refreshing uh, to have the Ultra Premier Classic around. It is a fan favorite within the Pokemon Go Battle League community. A lot of people, I, I don't know anyone who dislikes the Ultra Premier Classic. Always a fun time. Very solid meta. Some new, uh, we'll see some new faces in the uh, in the meta as well. Um, uh, Como O comes to mind. Uh, Como O was not available back when it was uh, last here. So we will be seeing a lot more new things pop up here and there. And which always makes for a very fun time. But guys, I had a blast. I hope you all enjoyed. As always, I thank you for watching and keep up the grind. Thank you, guys.